What's up y'all? It's been like 50 years. How are ya? I have grandkids now. I wanted to make a very fun, hopefully, we'll see, video uh, showing my uh, process journey of how I made clay pins. <laughs> I mean, I am a 2D artist. I work solely with traditional media on paper and doing this was like, like, out of the box for me. I do want to say that this video is brought to you by the amazing people at Hairpin Creative who gave me the chance to uh, use their amazing and affordable art products to take this amazing clay pen experimental journey. Hairpin Creative is an art supply company and they carry lots of affordable art supplies from paints to clay to canvases to tools to drawing stuff. Like they have a lot and it's it's amazing. Like y'all have seen me use this stuff on stream. It's pretty awesome. I, like I got to work with gouache. Guys, guys this gouache set like Y'all will see the colors that I got to swatch and the swatch of gouache, the gouache swatches. <sighs> They're so pretty. So without further ado, let's go on a clay pin journey, shall we? So first and foremost, this clay is actually really great. You get a pound of clay and it's very easy to work with. The thing about air dry clay is, I mean, it's activated by air. So you've got to make sure you're very careful when working with it. I keep a cup of water on hand with me so that if ever it gets too dry, I just pour like maybe a couple of drops in it just to work it in. I also thankfully had a roller <laughs> that was old. I just replaced it with a new silicone one. So this wooden one was perfect to use for the project. Uh, and this is what I used to roll my dough out. I kind of didn't know how much to use <laughs> and how thick to make it so I just kept like adding more and rolling out more until I got to my desired thickness I wanted to make them thick <laughs> and the tools that I used to cut was an exacto knife it's really the only tool I had on hand I wanted to try to make it work with whatever I had so I used my exacto knife to just kind of like poke little guide holes where I wanted my designs and just I guess map out my designs but as you can see here <laughs> I would get frustrated a lot and kind of start over I actually started over quite a few times I'd be I get in my head a lot I'm since I'm a perfectionist and <laughs> I just I kept starting over and wanting to make sure everything was perfect but in the end I ended up going with a thicker pin and I just kept measuring it out and thankfully I started to learn different techniques along the way <laughs> with the exacto knife and terms of poking a pattern and then cutting out the design and working with the water to smooth out the edges which made it a lot easier to work with. I ended up going with a few funny designs like I did a few teacups, uh, I did some tacos, I did uh, conchas and of course I had to add mustaches because you know it's my brand. <laughs> So over the course of the next couple days after finishing the pins, I let the clay dry out near my desk. The clay usually takes three days to dry, which is fine. I let it dry during my work week and I just kind of let them sit on a towel. That way it would absorb the moisture. And then after the days were over, before I started painting, I took little sheets of sandpaper, which I found on Amazon, 
and I just kind of sanded them down because they were like little bits that were just kind of hanging off, little rough edges. I didn't want anything to be too sharp. And so thankfully one of the little tidbits that I found was taking either like sandpaper or a sand block thingy, that, I don't know, but something to sand it down and make it smooth. So I wanted to do that, especially before putting down any paint or resin. That way it wasn't rough or textured. So now comes a fun part where we get to paint. And let me tell you something, these gouache paints from Hairpin Creative were amazing. And I also got the gallery brush set and I got the detail brush set, which I actually don't think I got good footage showing them off, but these gouache, gouache, gouache <laughs> paints were so pigmented and beautiful. I, I mean, you'll see the swatch sheet as I'm painting it, but I, loved these colors. I couldn't wait to use them on these pins. I knew that they were going to end up being so vibrant and especially after the resin would go on there and just kind of like make them pop. I was I was so ready to just see them in action. So this was actually my first time ever painting with gouache. The only paint I really painted with is acrylics. And so this was just a whole different medium for me. I heard it's kind of like a, a hybrid between watercolor and acrylic, which it definitely felt like that. And so going into it, I was like, I have no idea how I should use these. I don't know if I should just use it straight, use it with water. And so right here, this first pin you'll see, I just use it straight without adding any water. So it looks very very thick but I mean the color got on there and then after a couple of pins I ended up diluting it with water and of course it still spread just as evenly just as beautiful and just as pigmented which kind of blew my mind I, I it's such a versatile paint and I, I don't know I think it's magic I don't know if I'm just like inexperienced oh yeah here's a shot of one of the detail brushes so this detail brush um, comes in a set and it's always been a need of mine to get detail brushes because I sometimes need those fine details in paintings and you can see here I was doing little stars on the backs I didn't want to leave them blank <laughs> for some reason I just was like I need to put something else interesting on the back of the pins so of course I put my purple backdrop um, with my purple signature color and of course the little sparkles uh, to accommodate and then came the part of painting the fronts and I always started with like the outer borders first because I wanted to make sure the sides were done that way I could just lay them down and not worry about having to lift them up again uh, <laughs> and I felt that was the, the, the least nerve-wracking method of painting the pins and you can see me get excited really fast right there but I was actually very happy with the way the colors were laying out um, and the fact that I could lay color down and it dried fairly quickly so that I could layer on top of it to fix it was just amazing I, I don't know the paintings relaxing I'm, I'm gonna just let you enjoy painting for a little bit <laughs>
So now it's time for all the detailing and for the resin process, I use wine corks that I sawed in half, sticky wall tag, and I put those together to stick the pins on there to keep them level on the cardboard. So that way they're hovered above and if any resin falls, it would drip onto the cardboard and not so much uh, create a pool. Um, I saw so many methods online, but I just kind of used what I had laying around the house uh, and it worked. And so to use resin, you gotta make sure you use protection. I had masks because, you know, we're in a pandemic, so made sure to use protection. And this is the resin I used, as well as an old paintbrush, and I had alcohol on hand because you wanna want make sure you rinse your brush with alcohol. And all those things, minus the alcohol, I found on Amazon, so I'll leave those in the links below. But resin is something that I am absolutely, <laughs> totally noob at. Um, you're probably going to see so many technical failures um, in terms of the way that I am resining. It's something I know that I need to work on and reading up on different ways to coat items, um, especially now that I know that you can use a lighter to get rid of bubbles, that is something that I want to explore. Now for the backs for the pins, I wanted something that was sturdy that would hold along with the resin. And so of course Gorilla Glue, I, I mean, I used Gorilla Glue back in my scenic design days. And so I did that first, let those sit and dry, and then I would go over it with resin. Uh, and I would let those sit in the sun. The little UV light that I got, it, it's, it's not great. I'll put the link below if you want something like simple and quick, but it took so many tries to get something to cure, and I don't recommend it at all. Um, but I laid these out in the sun and it cured so fast. <laughs> so, um, but this is kind of the method that I did with resin. I, I know I could improve so much with how I do it, but in the end, I really enjoyed the end product. They came out really nice. Um, definitely flaws, but hey, uh, it was my first time, so I, I didn't hate them and I just ended up taking a towel with water just kind of wash them off um, especially with taking them outside I felt like there was just pollen coating them so I just gave them a quick wash So after everything was said and done, I had to give these pins some good packaging. So of course I named them statement pieces and I gave them little custom cards that was going to go in the packaging with them. I even gave it a little backing with all my information. So if anyone needed it, it would be on there. And I used the cardboard as kind of like a little buffer to poke the holes for each pin. And I used a little speech bubble on the design as kind of like the little highlight point for the design. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I tried to make it as simple but in my style as possible, and I really, really liked how it turned out. Um, they all have rubber backings. I think they all have two, if I remember right, two pin backs, because I wanted to make sure they were sturdy, because some of them were really thick. Um, and I've got them all just packaged up in a little bag, sealed with a little bit of washi tape, and that is my packaging that I did for my pins just to have it <laughs> have a little extra oomph <laughs> upon arrival look at it look at it in a speech bubble you guys <laughs> and yeah those are all the pins in their final packaging i'm actually really happy with how they turned out and that is how i made the clay pins that I did. And I'm actually very happy with how they turned out. I will be listing them in my shop today. So hopefully, uh, if you like them, you can go snag one for yourself. I call them statement pieces. It's a statement piece. It's very, very, very piece of statement. They have imperfections, every single one of them, but they're all unique and I, I love it. I, <laughs> it was so much fun. And like, I'm, I've already ordered more clay and molded the next round. Like they're already, like I already have a whole tray of the, the next round molded. So I'm, I'm excited. 
I'm excited. I'm, I'm officially on the, the clay pin making tr train and I love it. It's just so relaxing and it's cool to like take ideas that you drew 2D and make it a 3D thing. I see why people like it now. So if you want to try making clay pins or do anything creatively artistic or go on a, a, a creative adventure, be sure to visit hairpincreative.com. I'll also put the link down below. And make sure you use code ARTWITHELIA and you'll get 5% off your order. Uh, they, they've got like amazing supplies. Like, like if you've been following my stream, I like to start the stream by drinking a cup of tea and drawing an original character based on the taste of the tea. And I use a bunch of multicolored markers as well as their fine liners to do them. And that's all from supplies that I find on their website. Like, y'all just need to go shopping. Treat yourself. Or if you need to get any gifts for your friends, make them do art. Make them make things for you. Let me know what else I should tackle, like creatively, uh, and artistically because I I mean I did this I did this I'm, I'm scared of nothing now I don't scare of anything thank you for watching uh, like subscribe you know what to do <laughs> and I'll see you next time bye